Matt? Present. Mr. Hooverman? Present. Smith? Here. Mr. Satchanelli? Present. Myself, Tom Livingston. I think the only one missing is Kadeem Roberts. So we do have a quorum. Um, we'll move forward. I'm just trying to juggle screens here, guys. So just bear with me. Okay. Uh, is there anybody who signed up to speak? We currently don't have any public attendees. Okay, Alan, you received no uh, no letters or correspondence of any type? Correct, uh, none. Anybody else? Okay, then I shall close public participation and move to approval of the minutes of the meeting of July 7th, 2021. Do you have a motion? So moved, Chairman Livingston. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burnett. Uh, any comments, changes, additions? Uh, I have a comment. Okay. If I may, on page three at the bottom, Mr. Hodel said once this project is complete, the school flooring will be asbestos free. The word flooring is missing. Okay. Are there any other comments or changes? Okay. Okay. Seeing none, all in favor of the minutes as amended, indicate by raising your hand. One, two, three. Uh, Nick, are you with us? Okay, so uh, unanimous then. Oh, Barbara? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Ms. Smith abstains. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right, uh, moving on to the first item under old business, review proposed disposition of city property located at the corner of West Cedar Street and Scribner Avenue. We refer the following recommendation to Common Council for final approval. Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute any and all documents necessary to convey to three color LLC, 11,443.3 square feet plus or minus of property as, as shown and described on a certain survey map described as map showing land of city of Norwalk to be acquired by three color LLC. See a, a care of, I guess, Gino Natera on West Cedar Street and Scribner Avenue intersection, Norwalk, Connecticut prepared by the City of Norwalk Department of Public Works dated July 3rd, 2018. And two, accept the conveyance of 728.9 square feet plus or minus of property from three color LSD as and where described on said map, subject to the easements, restrictions, rights, and obligations generally described in the memorandum of Allen Lowe dated July 29th, 2021 for the purchase price of $102,921. Do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Hulman, thank you. Alan, you want to uh, bring us up to date on this one? Yeah, <clears throat> as, as everybody knows, uh, we've been talking about this item for probably, well, at least two years and probably started probably like five years ago. Uh, but through all this process, we have done everything that we, the committee need to do and the city need to do in terms of process wise. And we had a, uh, you know, we notify all the department heads about this, this request and the need for the property. We also had a public hearing. Uh, we went to pl planning commission and they have some comments which was presented back to the committee and we considered those and we made most of those a condition of any land sale and also the last step we were supposed to do is that uh the the uh gino our, 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 our requestee um he has paid for us for a appraisal that was managed and uh, and authorized by the by law department and we completed the appraisal the play, appraisal value is $110,000 for, for the land that we were going to sell to, uh, well, the land value that of the proper city property. And on the other hand, the city needed some right of way to maintain a property right of way width along West Cedar Street. And uh, that's about 700 square feet. So I deducted the cost based on the square footage price per square foot. foot. And uh, with a net cost to uh, Mr. Uh, Matera to 102921 $102, uh, we we had gone through all the process, and previously the committee had expressed interest. As long as we are, as long as we incorporate all the conditions of planning uh, planning commission, as well as that the uh, the value of the property uh, is based on appraisal. So we have wished that we have completed all the process that we 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 are, we are, to, we are to have, and so assume uh, subject to the committee's approval, this will go to common council, and that would be the end of the process that would be finally approved by the common council. And I just want to note one other thing. Uh, I haven't talked to uh, Mr. Materia about the survey that was prepared. 
what by the by DPW because the DPW decided to prepare the survey for for this process because the city needed it right away. So DPW had agreed to prepare the survey. The only only issue we have is that the staff person, the survey on staff, has since retired. So that survey is never hundred percent completed. So there may be a little bit of cost to uh finalize that survey. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll figure it out administratively between uh, the law department and Mr. Matera. But I think that potential there's a there's a few dollars to finish the survey. So I don't know what that is, but uh, we I am again without telling Gino ahead of time. I expected the the seller to figure it out <laughs> in terms of paying for it. So okay. it shouldn't be too much. The survey is done, but it's just, maybe we can find the um, the retired city employee who's 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 a certified surveyor to stamp it, and we may have to pay something for it kind of thing. So we work it out. It's a minor cost. Okay, overall. so Alan. And one of the things I recall what, from the planning commission and as well as this committee, we asked that there be uh, new trees planted. So I see on your attachment, the, at least, I think at least six trees. Is that, uh, and those will be in the, is it a deed restriction? How are we in, enforcing this, if you will? Uh, we, will we will be getting a, um, um, I think that was true. We'll be getting a, um, uh, bear with me for a second. Uh, we will be getting a, a surety bond as part of the closing documents uh, for the value of the landscaping to ensure that uh, the, the buyer will, 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 <clears throat> will uh, install the plans as proposed. And at the same time, um, we will we'll be getting a planting, we'll work with them, work with uh, Gino to come up with a planting list that's satisfaction to the city. And, and how long will the bond be? How long? Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't talked about it. I would say typically, I mean, I mean, Gino is here, but I mean, you typically we would think it's a, a year. I don't know. Well, probably okay. needs to be, probably needs to be a little longer because the trees want to make sure they live. Okay. Um, all right. Um, does anyone member of the commission uh, committee have any questions or comments before I let Mr. Matero speak? Or, all right, Mr. Matero, you want to comment at all or any any thoughts? Uh, I believe the only question that you had was the um, the length of the bond, and I would agree to extend the bond if you deemed it necessary, year, two years, three years, whatever you wish. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Okay, you're raising your hand. One, two, three. Nick? Okay, so it's uh, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCara. Look forward to seeing the... Uh, Landscaping and the finished product <laughs> after all this time. Yeah. It is, it's, it's been a long journey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on to new business. Uh, it's about the Gino. It's going to come to council next Tuesday night. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Matera. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Moving on to new business uh, Board of Education review bids for the removal of underground storage tank tanks at various schools and refer the following to the Common Council for action. A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with B&W Paving and Landscaping LLC for the Kendall Elementary School oil tank removal project, state project 103-0260 CVOT. Nathan Hale School oil tank removal project, state project 103-0259 CVOT. Silver Mine Elementary School oil tank replacement project, state project 103-0255 CVOT and Rowayton Elementary School oil tank replacement project, state project 103-0257 CVOT for a total not to exceed $441,400. Count noted and B authorized the MPS facilities department to issue change orders on this contract for a total of $44,140, $140 account noted. Do I have a motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Saccinelli. I am glad that I don't have to read this six, five times, but um, <laughs> uh, Bill, you want to talk about this a little? We've, we've, we've had a lot of discussions about these tanks, but anything you want to tell us about these? Sure. These so um, finally, the uh, state gave us approval to go out to bid, and that's what you have here in front of us. Um, what this encompasses is four schools. Uh, that is two tank removals. We have some tanks in the ground that are not being used because they already have, they have been switched over to gas. And then the other two schools in front of you are conversions. Uh, the tanks are being removed from the ground and above ground storage tanks are being installed in its place. So that's a total of four tanks. 
Uh, the price we have here is about, gee, it's almost $175,000 under the budget we estimated for these projects. And we've checked the credentials and uh, reviewed the scope of work uh, with BMW. And um, they are certainly the company that uh, has the forces to do this. So I further want to uh, explain a little more about this project and I'll try to be brief. Uh, there are more tanks that we were approved to remove from the state and the Common Council and land use has that money set aside as well. Um, that includes Wolf Pit, Fox Run, Tracy, Naramek, and Roten. Uh, they are not here in uh, uh, being proposed today because a little change has happened. I should say a big change has happened. Uh, not long ago, maybe within the past year, this board asked me the question, when I raised these uh, uh, projects, Bill, a uh, is there a possibility of gas in these schools? Why would you convert from oil to oil? And I answered with the uh, answer I received from our public utility company. And that was no, no gas in these areas. So I was continuing to work with Eversource. Why? Because if any of you travel during the day around Norwalk, there are detours all around this city. That is Eversource hiring Burns Construction to dig up the streets to do what? To put new gas mains in. So... I was troubled by that. Each day I would try to travel to a school, I would be detoured around the city. I continue to pursue Eversource. How come you're telling me there's no gas at Fox Run and I see burns all over the place? 14 months later, I got my answer. Bill, yes, there will be gas available. Not only will there be gas available, we will give it and provide it free of charge to the city of Norwalk and the Board of Ed. I said, can I have that in writing? And I have that back up in writing. That's why the remaining schools are not in front of you today. Now you might ask, well, why are we replacing the uh, below ground oil storage tanks at Silver Mine and Rowayton to above ground? Well, the answer to that is simple. While the remaining schools will be no cost to the city and the Board of Ed, the cost to uh, run gas to Rowayton was $650,000. The cost to run gas to Silvermine was $850,000. So I thought that was a no brainer. Why should we invest in that money? Let's go uh, with above ground oil storage tanks. So I just wanted to um, explain and further explain myself that while a year ago, I went in front of this board and said, there is no gas available. Things have changed a year later. And I think that's good news for the city. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you. I, I know for a fact, my own experience, Roten, uh, I mean, all of Highland in front of Roten has been dug up, so I can fully understand that one. Um, going back, so this will be with those, those particular uh, situations you described, as well as these four, that covers all of the tanks? Uh, no, they are uh, three or four more of which I would be in front of this board a year or so from now to request funding. So once they once so, they connect once they connect the gas, then you'll pull out the tanks. Yes. Okay. Now uh, if, the ones that are remaining uh, reach their useful end of life a year from now. That's why they haven't been presented. And is there any leakage around any of these that you know of? We do not know of any. When we start digging, we might find something that's a little different. We have inspection ports, and those inspection ports have not shown any leakage. Okay. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Um, I just want to add one thing. Uh, Cranberry School, we are removing the underground tank Cranberry as part of an upcoming project. And we had talked to uh, uh, Eversource, I still call them Yankee Gas, <laughs> Eversource. <clears throat> and because they're on the other side of uh, Mary Potway, it's just financially, it never was going to make sense to bring gas up that way. So they, don't, they didn't even want to entertain it to figure out how much it would be because then we got to go under the bridge and things like that. So it just wasn't financially feasible. And also there's no, <clears throat> because it's AAA residence zone, the property is so far apart that there's no benefit to them. So that's why cranberry, we're going to do cranberry. We will continue to use uh, oil and electric as the main source of uh, power. I think the estimated cost 
to potentially run gas to Cranberry was 1.2 million, last I heard. So that no. wouldn't be feasible. No. Okay, any other comments, questions? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Uh, yeah, on me, Kingham. yes, uh, Mr. Lipson. Okay, thank you. So it's unanimous. All right, moving on to the Mayor Tom Aquarium. Uh, review proposed actions necessary for implementation of the replacement Meerkat exhibit with the state's functional replacement funds and refer the following to the Common Council for approval. A, authorize to increase the change order allowance with the APONG's construction management agreement from the Norwalk Maritime Aquarium functional replacement project for a total not to exceed $2,061,569 necessary for the construction of the Meerkat exhibit. Funds are available from the state of from the state and the Maritime Aquarium Functional Replacement Project account noted. Any funds, shortage, or expenditures in excess of, the, of available funds from the state will be provided by the Maritime Aquarium. B, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Willing to execute an amendment to the Maritime Aquarium Functional Replacement Assistance Agreement between the city and the state of Connecticut DOT to reflect the inclusion of the implementation of the Meerkat exhibit and the adjustment of the completion date. C, Authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute an amendment to the agreement with the Maritime Aquarium for the State Functional Replacement Project for the inclusion of the Meerkat exhibit and reconfirm the Maritime Aquarium's responsibilities to compensate the city for all expenditures in excess of the state's functional replacement funds. And D, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute an amendment to the agreement with the Construction Solutions Group for the management of the Maritime Aquarium Functional Replacement Project for an additional three months for a total not to exceed $25,000. Uh, funds are available from the state in the Maritime Aquarium Functional Replacement Project account noted. Do I have a motion? Um, thank you, Ms. Smith. Okay, um, Alan, you want to talk about this first? And then yeah, the, um, I think a, I think all, all member of Common Council and the public uh, is, a, is aware that the, we have completed the uh, we together, the city, the state, as well as Maritime Aquarium, have worked together. And using the fund that was a function replacement project relating to the walkway project <clears throat> to, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, construct the 4D theater, which is completed in January of this year. And also the seal tank, if you haven't seen it already, uh, was complete, completed in the middle of uh, May of this year. So now it's open to the public and uh, I think it's been a big hit. I assume it's a big hit, right, Dave? <laughs> um, I think uh, overall, I think that, um, I think we all we 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 have com completed a really really strong task. I mean, it took us two years, well, multiple years to get to this point. Uh, part of the commitment from the state, it's a forty million dollars, and and it's not like a grant. It's really a a a, a, a uh, pretty much a compensation of the uh, of the you know of the easements and 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 removal. I'm I'm oh my MX field and all that stuff. It's a compensation. So. The, the strategy always been is that we have to bid previously for multiple scope within this project. When we bid out, we, you know, the, the scope is greater than what the, the $40 million budgeted for this project. So we, we, we down, downsize the scope and primary focus was the 4D theater and the seal tank. So we, we accomplished those. And it's always been a, a commitment of the state and the city that any balance of fund would stay in the account and to help a, a Maritime Aquarium to finish the remaining, whatever we can do with the remaining scope, which include this Maricat exhibit, the goldfish tank, as well as the west entrance. So those are the things that we haven't been able to complete and the balance fund stays in the account to, to try to accomplish as much of those remaining items as possible. Um, since the issuing, issuance of my memo from uh, last week, uh, we have been working with the construction team, AP and ONG construction and our, and our design and our management team to close out all the open change orders. So in my memo, I identified that we have a balance of 2,093,154 remaining uh, available to the Maricat. The actual amount is less. Uh, it's about, um, <clears throat> the actual amount, let me just get it out here. <clears throat> See that? And about 62, I need to wear my glasses. Um, the at this point we did a we did the update as of Monday uh, Monday this week. It's one million seven hundred ninety five thousand seven thirty four. So this is our projected number. It's not the, the actual amount yet. It's still there. There there's a number of um, 
free uh, balances that we need to, we still have to close out. But generally speaking, that's our that's our the, we capture all the largest, biggest ex financial exposures that we have, and we are thinking that this is close to pretty much close to the 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 um, the free balance will be available for the America exhibit. So the price, the original price the APO and G gave us, uh, they went out to using the existing low bid contractor where applicable and also get alternate pricing where you feel the price is too high. The first number came in about $2.6 million. Since then we, 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 we do further value engineering and we got further pricing for different contractors. But we came down to 2,061,000, something like that. Um, so that amount is over $1.8 million that we have. But uh, but based on the conversation we have, I have with Dave and Dave with his board members and all, um, the maritime aquarium will come up, will be responsible for the difference in, in the amount that the state provides to the city. And the city and the city and state have been has stated very clearly to the maritime aquarium in the past that we are not contributing money to this project. So maritime aquarium is stepping up to 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 uh, compensate any, any any amount that excess of the amount available from the state. Uh, Dave, you want to add any more to this? Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, first off, just uh, thank you to the committee and you, Alan, and the city of Norwalk for all your support um, in this project. Uh, we, we did complete a, a very successful uh, opening of the Seal Pool and 4D Theater, which, which is great. And we're looking forward to the next part of this project. Um, and the Maritime Aquarium is prepared to um, come up with the funds uh, to compensate for the difference uh, between the budget um, and the cost of the, of the project. Um, and should that project go over budget, the Maritime Aquarium will also uh, be prepared to pay for, for those funds moving forward. And uh, I just, one other thing I want to know is that the, these number being carried, we have about $100,000 for contingency set aside right now. And um, also, they are, we are continuing to look at the budget sheet that have, I know that I have not sent it to the uh, council members, but um, I have that available if uh, I can forward to you tomorrow morning when I, when I get back to the office. Um, there are still miscellaneous dollar amount, maybe 10 grand here, 5,000 here kind of thing that we can still continue, we will continue to capture those and put it back into the funds, try to, uh, to make, to reduce the burden on the Maritime Aquarium. But at the end of the day, Maritime Aquarium will be putting money in this project, there's no question. I, I mean, we are $260,000 short, generally speaking. But uh, we expected the contingency, even though it's $100,000, we'll be spending some of it. So there, there's money that we will need for the Maritime Aquarium. Yeah, um, so, well, Alan, a couple of things. One, um, I take it the demolition of the old IMAX theater is outside of this. Is that not part of the forty million? Right. That that's that's hundred percent correct. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, anything we can find extra money to give to the to the to this project in the excess budget, I think would be great. Um, I mean, the the, the completed four uh, D theater and the seal pool are just amazing. Everybody should see them if they haven't already. And I really commend Alan and and the Maritime Aquarium for this for the success of those projects. They're really amazing. It's quite it's quite something for Norwalk and the Maritime Aquarium. So thank you for that, Alan and Dave. Uh, any questions or comments on this? Okay. Yeah, just uh, Mr. Holdman. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just kind of want to echo the the seal tank and the 4D theater are amazing. And I'm glad that there's a way to give the meerkats a home because they they deserve a good home too. So I'm, I'm <laughs> excited to see that that we're able to, to figure out a way to move that forward as well. I can't remember. I think maybe it's uh, Councilwoman Revolu suggesting maybe we have an exhibit in the in the lobby of City in the Hall lobby of the meerkats, and I like that idea too. <laughs> <laughs> I I love those meerkats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one, uh, all in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Alan, thank you, Dave. Sure. Thank um, you. Thank you, Dave. Thank and, you. All right, um, and I guess that's it, Alan, unless there's uh, anything else or anybody else has any comments or questions. 
No, I don't have anything else. That's uh, yeah. Uh, we I'm not we're not doing an update on the school project right now because uh, Jim's on vacation this week. I could do one, but I figure we we can take care of it next time. Uh, Mr. Burnett, you had a hand up. Uh, yeah, I, I was. I had my hand. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I had my hand up because yeah, on the Board of Education updates in the minutes, there were a couple of comments that we would get updates in the August meeting, especially around the Columbus School, uh, whether the um, the concept of placing two schools on one site was feasible. I don't know if we have received an update on that. We have about probably about a week and a half ago, uh, and uh, we are reviewing those. And um, I'm, I'm scheduling a meeting with the superintendent and some board members, and I think a couple of council person. Uh, I think Darlene is one of them. I forgot who the second person is, uh, to go over together. Um, and I think uh, the superintendent's on vacation this, this week, I think next week. So I think it's somewhere in the August 14 or 17 or something like that. Uh, we are, there's a scheduled meeting with the state in September. So we, we need to, we, the city and the Board of Education need to be prepared to meet with the state on this matter. And uh, our study um, our evaluation, conceptual evaluation, it's, in my view, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, we are doing our share of our responsibility to provide technical support to the Board of Education. So our, our evaluation, it's a, it's a, you know, whether it fits on the site and how much it is, um, I think generally speaking, the number shows that we could, based on consolidate the funds from new Columbus school and the, and the renovation old, no, old Columbus school total about $76 million. It's generally speaking, it's sufficient to support a school of 750 kids. So I think there's a lot more information, but I, uh, but I think uh, it will be a separate discussion and information. And some of this, before we talk again, like I said last time, because some of this, uh, we are talking about a specific site and stuff. We want to hold that in a, a executive session because we haven't approached the property only yet. Um, but in any way, generally speaking, one site could, the money we have, we can support a school approximately 750 kids. So we still need further conversation with uh, the superintendents to see what that meets her requirements. At the same time, the board of ed has their, their, their share of responsibility to do, which is about uh, district enrollment, uh, school um, student distribution around different schools and, and the future projection, enrollment projection would be. And also, I think they need to look at the educational side, whether this is, you know, we're talking about two schools. One is the South North School, the other one is the, the Columbus School. Um, whether it's K to eight, uh, pre-K to eight or K to K to five and how many sections and stuff, that still need to be talked about and evaluated. So it's a little premature to talk about publicly because we, we don't know yet. And we've been just in, in conversation to see what may or may not work at this point. Our goal is to get to, to get this, um, in terms of process wise, we, when we meet staff wise uh, next week, week after, we go to stay in September. And then at some point, the Board of Ed need to take the action first before the common council do anything. The Board of Ed need to approve the project as a combined school uh, with, you know, with S education specifications and, and how many students and what grades and everything else. So that the board need to approve that before the city can uh, take its steps in terms of, uh, because right now the money, the money we have is two separate accounts. One is building a new, uh, Columbus School at Ely site. The, um, the, other, uh, the other capital money is for renovation of the existing Columbus School at, on uh, Chest Chestnut Street. So if you combine it, we probably have to do a special appropriation to merge the money together. Uh, so, so we have to delete the money and create a new account so that both, both all the funds can consolidate in one account uh, to, to implement one single project. At the same time, we will approach a property owner, start negotiation of potential requisition of property. So the board had to take action first before the city does. Okay. Anything else before we get a motion to adjourn? Okay, do I have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Sacinelli. All in favor? All right, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, enjoy the I guess.
rest of your evening and the rest of August. <laughs> it's a all nice right. short August meeting. Yeah, exactly. That's the way all August meetings should be if they haven't happened at all.